Coming up this week, Google reports a $100 billion quarter and marks the occasion with some new Gemini releases. Anthropic gains some new Excel powers, and a new study puts AI agents to the test, asking whether they can really replace humans. Stay tuned for all of that and more, and if you enjoy the briefing, hit the subscribe and the like button. So first up this week, Google's parent company, Alphabet, reported their earnings this week, and their results were pretty spectacular. The company recorded double-digit growth across pretty much every part of their business, helping it to achieve its first ever $100 billion quarter. CEO Sundar Pichai said that the company's full-stack approach to AI, where it owns the infrastructure, models and the products, is paying dividends. And based on these results, it's hard to disagree. Google Cloud revenue is up 34%, Gemini now has 650 million monthly active users, and services revenue is up 14%. And most interesting for me at least, Google search ads revenue is up 15%. So it looks like as organic traffic declines, companies are increasingly having to pay for visibility in both traditional search and in AI mode. And this week, Google continued to build upon this momentum with some new product releases. First, Gemini can now create presentations for you from directly inside the Google app. Once you've uploaded your source materials and prompted Gemini, it will now create a set of slides with a theme and relevant images. You can then export this presentation directly from the Gemini app into Google Slides. Google has pitched this for multiple different use cases, including the ability to upload a campaign brief or a product doc and generate a launch presentation. And so I decided to try this out for myself, and here's an example of it in action, where it takes some SaaS product metrics and transforms this into a presentation. As you can see, the results are pretty solid to use as a template, but the images that it chooses to use still feel a little bit AI sloppy. Google Labs has also unveiled an experimental new product this week called Pomeli. This is a tool which analyzes websites to extract brand guidelines and then proposes campaign ideas for marketing. You can then edit these assets inside Pomeli to match your brand's colors, which could be super helpful for product marketing teams. Elsewhere, Google's closest workplace rival, Microsoft, launched two major new AI agents of its own this week with App Builder and Workflows. The new App Builder agent lets users build agents in a few minutes and is grounded in Microsoft 365 products like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. And the Workflows agent is designed to automate tasks like sending emails, reminders, and sharing team updates. Their CEO, Satya Nadella, says that he's super energized about this and shared a demo of an automation workflow over on X. And speaking of Excel, Anthropic released a bunch of new Excel-specific features this week designed to help you to create more complex spreadsheets quickly. The new feature includes a new Excel add-in, new connectors to real-time data and market analysis, plus a pre-built skill that now includes cash flow models. And if you want more examples of how you can use AI for things like data analysis and other productivity-related tools, then check out the Department of Product mini app library over on Substack. This includes over 25 different prompts and mini apps that you can create to build your own apps at work, as well as AI prompts for things like strategy creation, productivity, and systems thinking. The library is updated every week with new prompts and mini apps, so if you're someone who likes to experiment with new prompts, then check that one out on Substack. In other news this week, PayPal has announced that users will soon be able to use its wallet to make agentic payments directly through ChatGPT. PayPal is adopting the agentic commerce protocol, that was announced earlier this month and will also support OpenAI's instant checkout. They said that by partnering with OpenAI and adopting the ACP, PayPal will power payments and experiences that help people to go from chat to checkout in just a few taps. ACP is quickly emerging as the de facto standard for agentic payments, and the addition of PayPal shows that ACP is gaining wider adoption outside of the protocol's co-author, Stripe. Stripe's product manager, Jeff Weinstein, welcomed the move, but Airbnb CEO is not convinced, at least for now. He says he won't allow people to book accommodation through ChatGPT because he didn't think the protocol was quite ready. He did, however, say that it's likely that ChatGPT will get access to Airbnb in the future once the finer details of the underpinning technologies are ironed out. Now let's take a look at some tools you can use, and we'll start with a new product called Riff, which is a Norwegian vibe coding tool that is specifically designed to help you to build internal tools that you can use at work. This week, they raised $16 million in Series A funding, and some of the examples that they share on their websites span categories including sales, finance, and marketing, but things like managing content studios, lead scoring, and monitoring your compliance. So if you're looking for new ways to vibe code mini apps at work, then check out Riff. The next product is something called Brainfish, which is designed to explain your product to anyone instantly. 
So Brainfish learns from your product videos and all of your data to then deliver AI agents that contextually support users across every channel. So for example, if somebody gets stuck in a specific part of your product, Brainfish's agents will detect that someone has got stuck and then contextually provide some proactive support to help them to complete the job that they were looking to do. So if you're looking for ways to improve your product activation and engagement metrics, then Brainfish could be worth checking out. And the final product for this week is something called Grain, and this is an alternative to tools like Google Analytics, and it's focused around mapping user journeys with real-time visualizations. You can visualize complete user journeys from start to goal, and its remote config feature means that you can update your app instantly without deployments and control features and content dynamically. So if you're looking for an alternative to things like Google Analytics, then Grain could be worth checking out. Now let's move on to some data and trends for the week. And the major new report that landed this week is the 2025 Wharton AI Adoption Report. This report shows that 74% of companies now report a positive return on investments from AI initiatives, with VPs most likely to report significantly positive ROIs at 45%, versus managers and directors at 27%. This suggests that the people closest to the detail on how AI is impacting day-to-day -day workflows are less likely to say that it has a positive significant ROI, with more senior leaders who perhaps are less close to the details reporting higher ROIs. Other stats from the report that might be of interest to product teams include the fact that 88% of enterprise decision makers report anticipated AI budget increases, 60% of companies now have a chief AI officer or CAIO, which is a bit of a mouthful, and ChatGPT is the leading product used by 67% of respondents, with Copilot and Gemini at 58% and 49%. The least used tools were DeepSeek, Perplexity and Claude. But while Claude may not be the first choice for workers, other data released this week shows that Anthropic has quietly overtaken OpenAI to become the AI vendor of choice for enterprise companies to power their AI efforts. As you can see in this graph, in 2023, OpenAI was the default choice for most enterprise businesses with a massive lead on its rivals. But more recently, Anthropic has closed that gap and has now overtaken OpenAI. Anthropic's strategic decision to be seen more as a serious business-oriented company that excels at coding versus OpenAI's decision to go all in on consumer appears to be paying off. Perhaps eventually OpenAI will spin off an enterprise-oriented service that operates a bit like AWS to make it distinct from consumer products like ChatGPT, especially since ChatGPT is soon to get adult erotica content. And after rumors of AI job replacements in its warehouse last week, Amazon this week shocked the tech world with confirmation that it would slash 14,000 jobs across many parts of its corporate workforce. A new piece in the Wall Street Journal this week documents the struggles of workers in their 20s, 30s and 40s to find new jobs in tech, with some resorting to having to sell their homes as a result of job losses. One CEO in this piece said that he slashed his engineering team by 80% and replaced it with people who manage clusters of AI coding agents instead. But are coding agents, and AI agents more broadly, actually better than human agents across other tasks? This week, a fascinating new study put this theory to the test, and this paper entitled Remote Labor Index, developed by the Center for AI Safety, evaluates end-to-end -end economically valuable freelance projects from real marketplaces. So in this study, they found that across 240 projects, these AI agents were able to achieve an automation rate of up to 2.5%. And in this context, an automation rate means the top agent produced client acceptable deliverables in about one in 40 projects and failed the rest. These failures were usually due to things like incorrect or usable files, missing components, or professional quality gaps. But performance of these models is improving across the board, as you can see in this chart. And as part of their research findings, they published this handy tool, which lets you choose each task and compare the output of the AI agent from each model versus the human completed version. Here's an example of one task where the agent was asked to view a YouTube video of a composition of singing in the rain, and then transcribe that and recreate it using a set of orchestral instruments. Here's the human version. And here's the AI agent version. So I've put the link in the description to this as it's actually quite an interesting way to examine the outputs of humans versus AI agents. 
And finally this week, if you're ever struggling to balance your work and life at home, then you might want to consider this new household robot. It's called Neo and is designed to follow instructions around the home to help you with chores like taking out the dishwasher and cleaning. It's priced at a cool $20,000 or a $500 a month subscription. The only catch is that it's actually powered by a human who remote controls it. For now, as Neo gathers the training data that it needs, a remote human will control the robot and perform the chores that you ask it, with of course strict controls about what it can and can't do. As you can see from this clip, it currently struggles with simple tasks like closing a dishwasher door, but the eventual vision for Neo is for it to be fully autonomous. It's backed by OpenAI and Samsung and could mark the first step towards humanoid robots at home. Is this something that you could imagine owning one day? Let me know in the comments below. And on that note, I'll leave it there for this week. Thanks very much for listening and watching. I'll be back next week with another briefing.